you do have a lot of parents here with children who are in pre uh, are preteen and teenagers. Um, in terms of your philosophy, is there any particular anything specific you want to say to those parents? Oh, so us. many things. I, you know, I think we just released our foundations for teens because like, there's so many things I think that parents of teens can do. There's so many small things that again, make such a big difference. So I'll, I'll try to think of a couple to start with. Number one, just remember that the job of your teen, going back to jobs, their job is to go from kind of like inhabitant of your home to an explorer of the world. Right. And if you think about an explorer of the world, if that was like their job, right. They, they try a lot of different things. They're out of the house a lot. But to me, the nuance and something really powerful to think about when you're the parent of a teen is there's a big difference between an explorer and a nomad. Mm. Okay, And nomads don't have a home base. Mm. Explorers do. Mm -hmm. And being an explorer is actually all about your relationship with the base. It's actually knowing I can explore and do these things because I have a secure base to mm -hmm. return to. And I think mm -hmm. if you're the parent of a teen, I just want you to know that your kid will never tell you this directly. They're not going to gratify it. They need you. They need mm -hmm. you in ways that are very different. They might mm -hmm. not want to watch a movie with you on a Friday night, but when they call you in to say goodnight, even though it's so annoying, because you're like, I've been trying to talk to you for hours, like that is they're getting that base so they can do their job of like figuring out who they are. And I'll, and I'll tell you a story to me. It brings up everything about teens. I remember a teenager I saw a little while ago in my private practice and she was so snarky and, and I, I love kids like this. So I really liked her, but she was really snarky. And she was telling me about how she had gotten this screaming match with her parents, right? About an issue related to a boy she was dating. And it was, it was a pretty toxic situation. The parents were very concerned. And she's like, and then I said, my room, you never understand me. I love you. You know, this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of stayed quiet and she ended up looking up at me with like her total demeanor changing. And she mm -hmm. just goes, Becky. Then I opened my door and they weren't even there. I mean, she was so despondent. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't take this so literally as saying, let your kids scream at you and then wait at their door. But I do think we take our teens way too literally, just like we sometimes take kids literally when they say, don't pick me up, but we would always stop them from running into the street. Mm -hmm. After something hard happens with your teen, they do need a note under the door. They do need a text that says, I love you. They do need you outside the door saying, hey, I'm here. I'm going to put your brother to bed, but then I'm here. I love you. That was a hard time. We're going to get through it together. And if you do write a note under your kid's door that says, I love you, I want you to know they will read it. Then they will tear it up and you'll hear the tearing it up. But I promise you, they read it first. They took it in and that is the security they still need from you. So if things feel contentious with your teens, it's because it's so conflictual for them to try to be close to you, to try to figure out who they are. They need to get distance to figure out who they are. Sometimes they take too much distance. They're mad. They need you. It's so many conflicting things, but just find your teen today. Just say things to them once in a while. Like, I'm here. I know this is a hard time. I love you. They need to hear, I know you're a good kid. Even when we're in a fight, I know you're a good kid. No matter what, I will always be here for you. There's nothing you could do or say that would ever make me stop loving you. And they will roll their eyes and they're going to say you're annoying. Let them. That's what they need to do. They need to push it away to give it just enough distance to take it in on their own accord. And they will. And they still really need you. Hmm. And I will say as a, as a, uh, as a parent of a, a teenager who's about to leave for college, um, that um, what happens, I think, is that there is that duality that's very confusing for parents. But now you hear the, I miss you and I'm excited to leave. And I think, and I'm hearing that so much around college, but I think that that's what teens are telling us all the time is like, I need you and I'm excited to explore on my own. And I need both. Yes. Yeah, great. That's excellent. Love that. Uh, Dr. Kathy, you have a question. Yes, uh, Becky and Lori, thank you so much for coming on today. This has been wonderful. Um, as you talk, I have uh, two adult sons and a stepson, uh, 18, 20, and 22. So we're in a different phase of parenting. And as you talk about some of the kind of the younger kids stuff, I think of how that translated into my world. And one of the things that I've worked on really hard as a parent is understanding that their success is not my success and their failure is not my failure, right? Lori, you brought up 
they are a separate person from you. And I think parents get wrapped up into the projection of, um, I, this is about more about me than it is about the child. Um, how would you suggest parents learn to watch their children and allow their children to sit in their own discomfort when that causes the parent their own their own discomfort? How, how what tools would you give to a parent of keeping themselves strong and keeping their confidence up so that they can literally allow themselves to walk away from their child who is hurting that maybe made a bad choice and has to sit in a consequence and kind of say, hey, I'm, I'm sure you feel disappointed in yourself, but then they have to step away. What are some tools for those parents? I think the the, the best, the, the most growth that teenagers and young adults have, or even younger kids, when the stakes are lower, but is is being in that discomfort is again but being you that they know you're on the bench with them so you're not going to solve the problem for them but you can talk to them about what they're experiencing as a result of a choice and how they made that choice and maybe how they can make like what they would do differently a different time and what was going on for them. So they can really self-reflect. This is the time being in discomfort. You know, you're not growing so much when things are going well, you're really growing when things are hard. So instead of shying away from the discomfort or saying that you're disappointed in them, I think that that's where you feel like they're a reflection of you and somehow you're afraid of how their actions are going to reflect on you. So it's not, I'm disappointed in you. It's, oh, Let's talk about what happened here. I'm here with you. You're going to, there will be whatever consequences of their choice are going to happen. It's not, you're not giving them the consequences anymore. The world is giving them the consequences, but you will be there with them, not to solve it, not to get them out of this mess, but to kind of be there with them in this hard time. And I'll, I'll add a couple things to that too. I think, I think it's really important to have a why for anything we do, you know, um, because when things get hard, we, we lose track of like, right. It's so easy to say like, what's the easiest solution. But if we come back to a why that's clear, it's our motivation for doing something hard. Right. And to me, a why in my own parenting journey is often, I'm not optimizing for my kids' short-term comfort. I'm optimizing for their long-term resilience. Like, mm -hmm. I, I think that why really matters. And that doesn't mean, by the way, when I go by an ice cream store and they're like, can I have ice cream? Of course there's days I'm like, I just can't deal with this. Fine, I'll get ice cream today. Of course, like I give myself permission to do that. But kids learn from patterns, not from events. So as a pattern, do I think my job is to help my kid flourish in adulthood, right? And stay connected to them along the way? Or do I think my job is to keep them short-term comfortable and happy? I don't think anyone would say our job is the latter, but reminding myself of that is really, really important. I think another idea just to remember is we can't develop coping skills for feelings we don't have. I know mm -hmm. as an adult, my kid's going to make a mistake. They're going to feel disappointed. They're going to feel jealous. They're going to be left out. And mm -hmm. I know it sounds almost um, extreme and, and it sounds like a little sick. Okay. But sometimes extreme ideas stick. I would almost invite you the next time your kid is like kind of disappointed about something, or it could be something like, oh, I forgot my water bottle for practice. Right. I actually want you to hear my voice being like, this is really good. This is really good. Like actually go that extreme because, right? Because mm -hmm. it feels so like, oh no, do I have to turn around my whole day to bring my kid a bagel, even though they are out of school where they could get lunch, right? Because they want their cream cheese bagel right now. Like this is actually really good because if my kid can tolerate not having their favorite lunch mm -hmm. at age, they're going to tolerate, I don't know, you know, not, you know, having the dish they want at a restaurant when they're 25 and not being like the 25 year old who looked like a two year old at a restaurant I recently went to who was yelling at a server that they were out of a special, right? Mm -hmm. Our kids don't build emotion regulation skills with age. People always say to me, when will my kid be able to manage mm -hmm. this? Better? It's not gifted to you. It's not mm -hmm. something that happens on your 10th birthday. It's definitely not taught in a high school or college class. It's what we do in the ages. It's how we intervene and letting our kids, let them be disappointed, which doesn't mean this is going to be really good for you. No, I think there's two things coping skill wise that I think about a lot, validation and hope. And they're another duality. Validate the feeling that your kid is having, but provide hope for your kid's ability to cope because that is what your kid is missing in that moment. Oh, this is really hard. And I know you're going to figure it out. Oh, it stinks. You didn't grab your bagel when you left. And I just know you're going to be able to get through the day. Both parts matter. Validation only, you can get sucked in. 
hope only as adults too. Like if I had a hard day and I told my husband, oh, I forgot my, I don't know, my my wallet at my office today. If he was just like, you're going to be fine. I, it would feel a lot better if he said, oh, really? So you're going to have to ask someone to borrow money. That's annoying. And I feel like you're going to get through it. Ooh, that now, that feels like it meets my need. So I'd say those three things. What are you optimizing for? Remember, like to almost have a little burst of joy. Like this is going to be, this is my moment. This is your moment to shine as a parent. Like if you're busy, I'm a busy parent. I almost like when I get home and the five minutes I have with one of my kids, they have a meltdown. Cause I'm like, this is at least high impact. I want to have high impact. This is a high impact moment. And then think validation plus hope is what really helps us tolerate their discomfort. Yeah. I, I love that. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm, look, I'm looking at my notes. Uh, Lori's ready to say goodbye. We are about to say goodbye. <laughs> there is just... Two things are true. Uh, that's fabulous. Going to keep that in my forefront of my mind. Sturdy parenting, uh, the team. I love the job descriptions. Uh, so much here. You want to learn more, everybody. We've just scratched the surface. This is a book. Check out the community. Learn Check out more. the app. The app. Check out our app. Tell us. Check out the app. Yes, check out our app. It's on the app store. It gives you what you need in five minutes a day. It's literally meant for the parent who can't get through a course because they only have time when they're brewing their coffee or they're like hiding out in their closet. Maybe that's just me. Um, but it, And it has an AI chatbot. So it's everything I've ever said in a chatbot. You use it in the moment. It's really, in my mind, the technology parents deserve. We have apps for everything. We should have an app for the most important and hardest job in the world. So it's all there for you. Hardest job in the world with the least amount of training, as you say. Right. This is a podcast you don't want to miss too. We're going to be so smart when we're done. Thank you ladies so much for a fabulous conversation. A plus.